There we go. Speedy, yo. What's going on, man? Two people. So I brought the live stream back. Hopefully the audio is better. I may have fixed it. Not too sure. So, yeah, we got Reef Tank. Gonna wait for more people to show up. And then I could bring you guys around the tank, show you what's uh, what's been going on in here. And then uh, that's pretty much it. I know a few of you guys requested more live streams, so I am on here. Speedy. Oh, yeah, I did, man. Here. I do have new leathers here. Bronx Reefer. What's going on, dude? Yeah. Oh, here, I'll show you in a sec. I'm trying to get this LG clip off here. All right. Yeah, there's the Devil's Hand leather core right here. Well beyond the size of a hand. That's a uh, neon green toadstool leather right here. And that's a piece of it that it broke off itself. Like, you see that indent right there? It actually shedded or whatever morphed itself and uh a piece fell off of it and i put it right down there and now it's growing into another one so that's pretty wicked what else we got here some mushrooms this new mushroom rock right here I'm starting to rebuild the tank you guys know it kind of crashed because faulty equipment and stuff like that so i'm bringing it back to life did another water change today to get rid of the cyanobacteria on the sand bed and it's coming along pretty good. Everything's doing really good. So pretty happy about that. Bronx Reefer Brock, what's going on, man? So if anybody's got any questions, leave them down below. I love answering them. Keep the conversation going. This is a fox coral over here, the Blastos. Stuff's not as open as usual in this tank right now because I recently did a water change today, this afternoon. So, as you guys know, corals tend to not open up too much after the, uh, the water changes, but as you can see here, I got the new pointer. Right here, we got some new Zoas right here. I thought they were utter chaos when I bought them. I'm not too sure if they are or not. You guys might have to be the judge of it. I'm uh, coming out with another reef update soon. I've been having problems with that my iMovie on my computer. It's not uploading my videos anymore. So I gotta find a way to do it on my phone instead. So we'll see how that goes. And then there's the chalice coral right here. Brought this one back. It's the pink and blue chalice. If you guys remember, I used to have one over here. Super big coral. It got really big, so so right here, got managed to find, they're very hard to find pieces of those chalices, but I did manage to find another one, it's right there. The lighting, I get, I get asked this all the time, I gotta make a lighting video on this tank. That should be a pretty good video. Two Kessel A160s, right there. Two on both sides. Lightening up the sides. Because you know with the 125s, there's two braces in the middle and then you got three different sections. And I got a big Zet light. This is a Zet light. Oh, where's the brand name? Uh, yeah. Zet light 6500 Q Maven LED right here. You can see all the different colors underneath it. I love this light. Amazing light. And then of course you got the Kessel controller over here. There it is. Let me know if the audio is good too, guys. I, I guess I was having some problems with it yesterday. My phone was acting up or something, so let me know about that. But that is the lighting, and we got the new, you guys seen the new scape from the last reef update too, which is looking and working very, very good. Two people. Uh, yeah, so that's basically the lighting on here. Three different lights. Love it. Works really good. And then I light the refugium with the old, uh, this is a 
CF Grow right here. This is an Amazon Grow Light for the Chato. Amazing light. I gotta make a separate. I gotta make a separate video just on this light because it. I, I can guarantee you guys it probably outperform really high end refugium lights. Just saying, and it only costs thirty bucks. It's not set to come on yet. I just flipped it on. Gabe's Reef, what's going on, dude? So I have that pufferfish video. I have it made. I'm trying to upload it. I'm trying to upload it. I failed the stupid iMovie on my on my Mac. It it won't upload my videos to YouTube anymore. So I, I'm trying to find a way, a different way to do stuff. Oh, we got seven viewers. Sweet. So the pufferfish, the are, are they reef safe video, I have it made. I'm trying to upload it right now. So you guys should see it tomorrow or sometime this week at the latest. I just got to figure out what I'm going to do to upload it, but it's totally made. It's going to be a very interesting video and very controversial, of course, but it, it will answer all your guys' questions because that's by far the most asked question I get out of all my videos is how I'm keeping this dude with a bunch of coral. I even did a flashback to when I had, when the tank had SPS and all that stuff in it, just to prove that this guy, at least mine, is reef safe. Okay, good, the audio is good. How's it going, dude? What kind of water do you use and how much for that tank? So, I could bring you down, guys downstairs really fast. Oh, cool, we got eight people. I was wondering if this was a good time to do the, uh, the video, but this is really good. Uh, figure wars. Okay, I'm gonna answer your question right now. So, I just did a water change today. I usually do 25 gallons at a time. In this 25 gallon water change, take 25 out, put 25 in. And I use RODI water and I use Fritz Pro, Pro RPM salt. So, if you guys stay with me, I'll, I'll come right back upstairs. I want to show you guys the setup though. I have done a entire video on on my RODI system and what I do for water changes. So if you guys are curious about that, go check it out. But I have my two barrel uh, system here. This is the waste barrel, they're 32 gallon cans. And this is a brute garbage can. Of course, food grade, which is 32 gallons. That's how I do my water changes. And then I got the Aqua FS or uh, the Barracuda up here. This uh, is 100 gallon per day unit. I know I traded a guy some coral for it, which great deal. And then I got my uh, reservoir down here, another Brute uh, 32 gallon um, water belt. It's filling right now actually. And I get the float valve on it to stop it when it uh, reaches that point. So I take the water out with this pump and that big hose right here. And if you guys are curious, if you want a behind the scenes, this is my fish and equipment room down here. It's pretty wicked actually. I should do a separate video just on this. You know, you got the fish wall over there. I've just collected different things over the years, you know. There's a whole background from my sump. It was a 40 gallon breeder, so that, that was just a cool picture. I just, I got a whole bunch of different things. This is just an equipment room in my basement. You know, the water heaters and everything. Got the sink here to clean the filter socks. There's one drying there. My extra jugs. I have like 40 gallons worth of jugs. Uh, just a few tanks. There's a bad Kessel light down there. Some ozone generators. Some big old filters. Bunch of filters. Filter floss. Fish bags. Just a bunch of random crap. The big python. Uh, just, I mean, look at this. Whole thing of equipment. Just pumps, heaters. Uh, the py python squeeze bulb. Just a bunch of different things. The holding tank for the fish. Just a big pump back there. They used to run the big old tank. Some wave makers. Uh, the two part right there, calcium and alkalinity. A bunch of old test kits, GFO. There's all kinds of stuff. I know some people like seeing behind the scenes and stuff. There's my TDS meter to see if the RODI um, is working. Bunch of different crap. There's the Pleco feeder right here. See, I used to have a freshwater tank and use that. Got a million nets like everybody does. Cleaning sponges. Pretty cool, there's a bio wheel. Oh my God, wait, I cannot, I actually do have a freshwater tank again. I forgot to tell you guys, here is uh, just a bunch of cool stuff. You know, you get these from ordering from BRS. Just cool signs, buckets, 
driftwood down there, siphon tubes. Oh, and here's the salt I use, Fritz Pearl RPM. Amazing salt. I would never, I really wouldn't go back to Red Sea. I was using Red Sea forever, but I mean, it's really no different. I get the same results from Fritz. Bunch of egg crate. And here's the rectangle log. This is, uh, I keep track, I think this is a cool idea for anybody that has a reef tank and a bunch of equipment like this, create like a water change vlog or a log, just log down every water change you do so you can keep track of all of them, like 25 gallons, 30, 50, 50. I mean, just when you did them so you know the last time you did a water change and how much and what day. When I clean the power heads, uh, the main return pump cleaning, RODI filter, uh, membrane changes, skimmer, when I take out the skimmer and clean the whole thing. Just pretty cool. So, and here's that cool fish chart I got from an old fish store that closed down. But yeah, that's just the fish room. It's pretty cool. All right, I'll go back upstairs. I have a new planet tank. You know, I should just give you guys a sneak peek at it because, well, this is my brother's. He's really into freshwater and planet tanks. This thing's amazing. I'm gonna do a video on this, so I'm only gonna show you guys a couple seconds of it, but this is a wicked tank. That's all you guys could see now. I ain't gonna go any closer. This is gonna be a video. But as you guys could see, it is a fully blown, let me see it here, fully blown planet tank right here with a bunch of fish, bunch of cool stuff. So yeah, I know, I know you guys are gonna get excited over this one. Because I had a lot of freshwater viewers in uh, in the audience out there. But you guys are getting a sneak peek. Very sneak peek. Uh, nobody's supposed to be seeing this yet. But uh, but you guys, the live streamers, that's it. I'm not going to give you guys any specifics. I'm not going to show you guys the fish. I'm going to be filming a vi separate video on this to uh, reveal this to you guys. It's it's really cool and it's a work in, uh, work in progress. So... There it is. That's all you guys are going to see. Sorry, but I want to make a whole video on it. Let me put this back on. Oh, I'm using, because my blue lights are on right now on my reef tank. So I got the old Coral uh, Polyp Lab uh, Coral View lens on here. Let me put that back on. There we go. So, all right, let me, let me go back and look at these comments here. So back to figure war, uh, it's 1230 in Ireland. What tank are you using for fish? Oh, this is a 125 gallon tank, six feet long, 18 inches wide and 24 inches tall. This is not 200 gallons. I wish I had a 200 gallon tank. Are you using a controller? Controller, no, I'm not. I'm not like a Neptune or anything. Hey, there's Puff right there, Sam. I'm not using a controller or anything. Let me see if this is on right. There we go. But the, I mean, there are controllers for the pump. This is the JBO return pump controller right here. It pretty much just shows you the wattage and stuff like that. The big ballast for the Zet light. Uh, I mean, there's not too many controllers. This is the controller, the Wi Fi controller for the Zet light right here. And uh, I, of course, have the WaveMaker controller up there but nothing special. Uh, but no Neptunes, I don't have the money for that. What do we got? Uh... Yeah, that tank, uh, it, the tank's not as big as you think. It just looks big on camera. That stands uh, perfectly fine. I, I usually, I used to have a tank that size on that stand, so it's fine. Uh, nice hand. Porcupine puffer in a reef tank. Did somebody just ask that? Harris, Harrison Fallows. Yes, sir, man. Let me, let me find him here. There he is. That is a porcupine puffer fish, and I have that video made. I, it would have been up yesterday actually if my computer was cooperating with me but it is not so you will be seeing that tomorrow or the next day i gotta figure it out but it's made and i'm trying to get it on youtube 
for you guys to see. Very controversial video. My opinions on keeping these guys in reef tanks. And you guys should be able to learn a heck of a lot from that video because I have it in steps. I think I have, what, four steps in what to look for when buying one of these guys and trying to put one in your reef tank. So it should open a lot of people's eyes. There's no other video like it on YouTube. That's why I made it. Yeah, it sucks. You can't really go to the fish store much. I still go to the fish store because there's a decent amount around me and they're still open. But uh, they, they can't get as many uh, shipments in because you know what's going on. So I, I don't have too much access to too many things, but I mean, I'm, I'm I watch the video, man. Watch the video, Harrison Fallows. Watch the video. You're gonna see it tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow or the next, like I said, it's made. I've been trying to put it up, but I, I got to I gotta figure out what's going on with the computer. So you're going to see, and it's going to open a lot of people's eyes tomorrow. So, and change a lot of people's opinions on these fish. So it should, it, it's going to be very good. Well, watch out. I miss fishing because it's so cold out there. Yeah, I mean, it's cold here too. I mean, it's supposed to warm up finally within the next week, so I'll go fishing too. Dropping by just a moment for support and look at... Select pet. Thank you, man. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, you're gonna... You guys are gonna love the video. It's gonna be amazing. So, it's more explanations and... Uh, tips and tricks to look for when purchasing a porcupine puffer for your reef tank. Open a lot of people's eyes, uh, change a lot of people's opinions on these fish, I think. Yeah, as you guys can see, now that I have more followers, I'm starting to uh, rebuild this tank. I just did a 25 gallon water change on it today. You guys know of the new scape that's been created. Devil sand leather coral, I'll take you guys around quick. <clears throat> Devil sand leather coral my group of mushrooms up here stuff's not as open today as usual because i did a water change not too long ago so stuff's still not happy uh true neon toadstool ultra neon yuma mushroom right there true neon toadstool over there blastos the usual coral but the new ones you guys are interested in these wicked zoas i picked up from a new fish store i found wicked frag two more growing on the side right now I got my got back my favorite chalice I've ever kept. Same color form, same type. So there he is, gonna start growing in nicely. Green star pops are taking over this awesome piece of rock faster than ever. So that's gonna be awesome. And then we got the new rock of zoas down there, or mushrooms, which is really cool. So gonna start growing this tank back. I'm working on it. Still looking for fish, too. Uh, let me see. Let me answer some more questions here. How much coral do you usually trade? I don't, I don't usually trade coral. I used to when I had it, but I don't have much now. I'm, I'm just not interested. I'm interested in restocking the tank. Uh, can you tell me how to get a new clownfish to start eating? Uh, you know what a lot of people do? with the new clownfish, just feed them, um, feed them brine shrimp. Any frozen food, any really small frozen food will work perfectly fine. No fish that, no healthy fish, I should say, no fish that's actually healthy will deny brine shrimp. Feed them frozen brine shrimp. He should eat that. If he doesn't, there could be something wrong or he's just way too new. Like if you got him yesterday or today, or two days ago even, he probably won't eat. But if it's been a week or more than three days, he should be eating. So feed him frozen food, forget the pellets. I don't like feeding dry food. Fish don't like it as much. Uh, now you got me looking at my empty 56 gallon house, I think. Heck yeah, it can be, man. I have too many, I have so many videos on setting up tanks 
Dude, I used to have a 60 gallon reef tank. So go check out that series. Really cool. It was simply ran too. Good lights, a decent filtration. It was a pretty successful tank. So definitely set that out, man. Even if you just do fish, heck. What's your lighting schedule? As you guys know, the two Kessel A160s on the outside, the big Zet Light 6500 on the uh, cover in the middle of the tank, pretty much put out the same lighting effect too. Not too much. Lighting schedule is the same on both. They both ramp up, ramp down. At the same time, I could take you on the Kessel controller right here. I don't know if, hold on. There we go. All right, let me show you guys. I did a video on this too, if you guys want to go check it out. Program, oh, oh God, hold on, messing stuff up. All right, here we go. I'm trying to look at it from the camera, but it's very hard. All right, I used Quick Set 4, I made my own. So, if we go into specifics here, these are for the Kessels, pretty much the same for the Zet Light. The tuning for them is the same. Uh, they come on at 1, 1 in the afternoon, uh, start off 35% color, 10% intensity, ramp up 30 minutes, 50, 50%, you guys can see, I'm not going to say it. Uh, the highest I have the Kessels and the Zet Light goes 80% color and only 60% intensity. You don't have to be very intense with these lights. That's for a couple hours during the day, ramp down later on at night to 10% color and still pretty high intensity, and then gone at uh, nine o'clock. So I have my lights on for eight, eight and a half hours a day. That's uh, what I do. It's always worked for me. Only 60, 60% uh, 60 intensity too. Do I quarantine my fish? No, I don't actually. I don't quarantine my fish. A lot of people do, and I understand that, but I've never really been a true believer in quarantining fish. I personally don't see the need of doing so if you buy it from a trusted fish store. If you buy it from a trusted fish store, um, you go to all the time, they have healthy tanks, healthy fish, I don't see the need to. I always ask the fish store to feed the fish before I, before I uh, buy them. Make sure it eats, make sure it's healthy. And uh, I don't see a problem with adding it. I've never had a problem with it, never had a problem with anything. If you trust your fish store and the fish eats when you buy it, no need to quarantine in my opinion. A lot of people will disagree, but whatever. I've never had a problem. I got blue tangs, I got uh, mimic tang, triggerfish, coral beauty, clownfish, wrasse. Never had a problem with any of them with ick or anything. Uh, I've never had a problem with any fish I've ever kept with thick or anything. I've never quarantined my fish. He started eating brown shrimp, but he stopped. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I would check your, uh, check the temperature and the salinity of the water. And make sure no other fish are bullying the clownfish, too, because that could be happening, too. I would make sure none of your, no other fish are bullying them. Cause that could be a cause. But, uh, I mean, you could try mysis, but he should be eating brine shrimp, no problem. You could try adding garlic extract and stuff to the food too. Try to entice them to eat. I'm not dosing any aminos. I used to dose that and it works. It, it uh, the corals definitely do really good with the amino acids. It definitely will not hurt the tank or the coral, they love it. So definitely if you have the money to dose aminos, definitely. I mean, you could try mysis. Usually the brine shrimp, if the clownfish is small, I would just do mysis or brine shrimp because mysis shrimp's usually bigger. And they don't usually, ex small ones don't accept it as often. But I found fish, the favorite food of fish is mice and shrimp, that's all I feed. Logo fish door, I get a bunch around me. Aquatica, um, cush corals, or uh, reptile house, 
and uh, Rob's Aquatics are around me. I got a bunch of aquarium, or fish stores around me. It's pretty cool. So I could get a decent amount of things. But I like them all for different reasons. Some are better for fish. Some are better for coral. Ice is usually cleaner than brine shrimp. Yeah, that's true. Yep. I prefer mice to shrimp. That's all I feed these fish. And it, brine shrimp isn't the best food to feed your fish. Usually mice to shrimp contains the most everything. That's why I only feed it. All right, here we go. So, if you guys have been watching my uh, channel here, you know that the tank, I mean, over the past couple months, the tank's been going through a crash and stuff like that. Because of that faulty impeller pump on my protein skimmer, was releasing all kinds of heavy metals and stuff like that. So, and I found out uh, my phosphates were also high, so last week I did so I put some GFO back into my media reactor you can see it tumbling right there and then this is Seachem uh, some heavy metal and uh, copper uh, reducer or it takes heavy metals out of the water so I got that tumbling in the other uh, media reactor that's usually my Chato reactor you can see it's wrapped in lights but uh, both these are tumbling right now uh, polishing the water so should be taking the phosphates down and taking out any heavy metals that are still left in the tank even though there shouldn't be much that's for sure so that's that's what i have going on So, uh, oh yeah, I just got my water here, too. What do we got? What else here? I suppose you guys probably want to see the fish, too. Like I said, video going up on the puffer fish. You guys should be seeing that very soon. There he is. Is it tank water? No, tank water smells fine. If your water smells, that's really bad. You do not want that. Run carbon and do big water changes. If your tank smells, it is not supposed to smell. That is very bad. What do we got here? Oh, refugium. I will turn on the lights for you guys. Here's the refugium here. Got the old CF Grow LED light on here off Amazon. Bunch of Chato in here. This stuff grows and takes over the whole sump within two weeks. I just ripped some out and now there's only half the sump filled because I just ripped up a whole bucket full of Chato. But uh, simple. It's the whole middle of my sump. I custom built this. You got the seven inch filter sock over here. Protein skimmer. This is the dump for the uh, the media reactors over there dumps right in the filter sock uh, water trickles over here there's a marine pure block in there biological filtration block this is the refugium a bunch of copepods amphipods there's a few flatworms I've always had in here too I can't get rid of them but whatever there's a big eheim heater if you could see it down there I wonder if you could see this better oh that's a little better yeah, there's a chato overflows into this uh, big sponge right here. And there's an egg crate underneath that holding it up. This catches any loose chato or anything that flows over here so it doesn't get into the pump. And then I got the big return pump over here. And that's pretty much it. I got the, uh, this is an anti-back uh, siphoning valve right there. And then I got the line marker with the, where the water's supposed to be. And that's pretty much it. But... I mean, if I had to estimate the size of this refugium, it's probably 10 gallons, 15 gallons of water right here. Let me hear, let me see here. Adding more fish. Oh yeah, I'm trying to. Here, hold on. I'm just, while I have you guys on this live stream, I need some ideas for fish, actually. 
I'm trying to find other fish that could go in this tank that are decently larger fish and can get along with tangs, triggerfish, and wrasse. I need some, I'm looking, I'm looking for fish for this tank, like no joke. I just need some ideas on what to add. It could be other tangs, trigger fish, anything. I, I just, I'd like to get some ideas from you guys on what, what you guys want to see in here. You know, I'm just looking for new fish, but I'd like to add a few more fish in here for sure. I'm, I'm looking right now. I just need some different ideas. I want something different. Uh, but yes, I want to add more fish for sure. Let me see. Uh, Yeah, dude, this is the big Zet light. It looks amazing. The uh, castles look good, too. My Chato keeps dying because my display is too clean. Oh, yeah. If you don't have any phosphates or any nitrates in your water, Chato won't grow. It'll pretty much just sit there and not do much. I had that problem um, a little bit, not too much. It's growing now because i got plenty of fish in here to feed it. But one thing you can do if you want it to start growing again, you could just take out your filter sock completely and just have the chato eat up all the uh, nitrates. A lot of people do that. Every tang needs a yellow tang. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I used to have a purple tang in here. Super aggressive fish, I had to get rid of them. But you know, I, w I was debating on whether to get a yellow tang, but I have this mimic tang. And I mean, it's bright yellow too. So I feel like it'd be repetitive to get two yellow fish in here. But, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I'd like to put another tang in here. I'm just not too sure which one. You know, I like the Atlantic, Atlantic blue tangs are pretty cool. Uh, just a less aggressive one. Even like a coal tang or a convict tang or something like that. Convict tangs are pretty cool. But, you know, I even thought of like a female blue jaw trigger fish. I thought that would be pretty cool to see what, see what the male trigger fish would do. Supposedly they swim together and stuff like that. I, I thought that would be pretty, pretty wicked. Tamini tang I thought about too. Yep, that's pretty cool. It'd be beneficial because he'd clean off the rocks. There's a little bit of algae on the rocks. That'd be interesting. Uh, I want more six line wrasse too. You can see, where is he at? Oh, there he is back there, if you could see him. Six line wrasse. I was gonna put two in my refugium to eat the rest of the flatworms. But I didn't want him eating all the, uh, the copepods in there too. Cause that wouldn't be good. But you could see like some of that, like the hippo tang over there and the mimic tang. They do graze on the rocks and eat the algae, which is pretty cool. See him? That guy's big too, dude. This hippo tang, fastest growing fish in my tank by far. He's probably up five inches now. Wicked tank, or wicked fish. What else? Oh, you know what? I was thinking about, cause I had one of these, these are the high doors, the new third generation wave makers or whatever they are with the swivel suction cup thing. I had one, it was getting really noisy on me, like the impeller or something. It was like way noisier than this one is. So I had to take it out and uh, put one of these old standard ones back in, which I mean, it's all right, it does the job, but I don't like these very much, so. I was thinking about get, replacing and getting a whole wave system in here. Like two of the same wave pumps with controllers. I was looking at the JBO ones with their own controllers so you could ramp them up and down and have a consistent wave back and forth motion, which was uh, pretty cool. A nice cool event. Yeah, uh, Antheus, yeah, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. Guy asked about this anemone over here. This is a tube anemone. 
Simple as that, tube anemone. This is a white one with a pink center. He's as white as you see it on camera, like it's stark white, it's super cool. This is a tube anemone. I have a full care guide on this guy on my channel. If you guys, if you wanna check it out, this is my favorite anemone for a reef tank. A lot of people disagree, but never had a problem. They don't move, they do eat fish, but no fish is stupid enough to go in there. And uh, yeah, they just look amazing. Kind of like a feather duster, but it's an anemone. And this, this dude's huge. Like it gets way bigger than that. That's for sure. Just a wicked, wicked anemone. Uh, big sea fan here too, I didn't show you guys. But that's a tube anemone. He used to be over there, way on that side. He was cramped over there, so I moved him over here. It's got a lot more space, doing a lot better. But as I was saying with the wave makers, I'm thinking I'm going to get two Jabo uh, controllable wave makers. I think they're a lot better. That way you could ramp up the power of them and uh, they could create the wave pulse mode back and forth. I think that'd be amazing. And they have a night mode which slows down the waves so it creates more natural environment. So, because I'm just tired of dealing with these uncontrollable, I should say, like wave makers. They're just kind of boring. There's way cooler ones out there. So I might upgrade those. So keep a lookout for that. I think it'd be a lot better for the tank and everything. I also want more snails in here, more turbo snails. Um, maybe another urchin too, something to eat the algae. I'm trying to get rid of the algae uh, for good in here. So yeah guys, if you want to shoot me more questions, keep the conversations going. Need more things to talk about here. Uh, what do we got? What do you guys want to see? Oh, do, yeah, I was wondering, there's so many different models of the j pumps. I need one for a six foot tank, or I'd, I'd get two of them. There'd be one on both sides. But what model is good for this size tank? I keep looking at all different types, but uh, there seems to be mixed reviews on them, on what which one's good for what size tank. So what's a good size, what's the right one for a 125? That's my question. Because I'm strongly considering those, I might buy them. The OW40 is nice. Yeah, I was looking at those. They're very controllable and I've heard really good things about them. And I have the JBO return pump, which is amazing. Never had a problem with it. I like the Jabo stuff, even though it's uh, Chinese. It's um, it's really good. I think it's really good stuff. I don't have any problem with it. There's a big old, um, I don't even know what type of snail that is, honestly. Is it an Estrella snail? Right here. Humongous snail. Like this guy is in charge of getting all the algae off the glass and everything. He's pretty much only out at night. Massive, he's about the size. He's bigger than a golf ball. He's probably approaching the size of a tennis ball. Looks small on camera, but he's a massive snail. OW40 or 60, all right, cool. So, the more power the better, I would say. Um, but I know I won't use it all. You know, it's cool because you can control the knob and everything and have the wave pulse mode, which I totally do because I think that looks awesome. Uh, I had acros at one point in here. You know, once I get back to dosing this tank, maybe, I might. I might get back to SPS and stuff like that. I love to because SPS cores were my favorite ones to keep by far. And uh, maybe if you go back in my old videos when this tank was really good, I had a bunch of acros over there. I had the Red Planet acro, just some random acro. There was a few other ones too, but uh, I was more into the the Pasiliporas and uh, Bird's Nest, Stylos, stuff like that. 
and the Montes. I had all kinds of Montes. But maybe eventually I'll put SPS back in here. Got to get the water in check right now. I'm fighting the phosphates right now. I'm bringing them down. No nitrates. There's no nitrates in this water. Barely any. Maybe five parts per million, which is right where you want it. And uh, salinity is spot on. Temperature is good. Once I get the phosphates in check, and I'm sure all the heavy metals are out of the water, we might get back in the uh, SPS game. That's for sure. And uh, I might start dosing because I still got the doses. I still got the calcium and al alkalinity down here. So definitely capable of doing it. Just got to get the water parameters back in check and start testing for that stuff again. Because then I'd start dosing uh, calcium and alkalinity regularly to keep them growing. But uh, the key is lowering them phosphates and uh, having them low. And uh, definite, definite possibility in the future. That's for sure. I thought I wouldn't get back into it, but it's looking like it. Because I got chalices, zoas back in here, and they're doing really good so far. So I got to start experimenting with enough of the soft corals. I got a whole bunch of soft corals. I know they're doing just fine in here. I got to start getting the LPS coral, like hammers, just hard, hard polyp stony corals, or the uh, Euphelia um, candy cane corals, stuff like that. Start experimenting with that again, see if it does good. And uh, if it does, we may move back into SPS corals, which bird's nest and stylos are my, by far my favorites. So maybe we could fit a heck of a lot more on this scape than the old scape, so definite possibility. Got to get the parameters in check. It's all about that. And uh, just got to get some more of the algae and stuff off the rocks and clean up the rocks a little bit, and uh, we should be good. You know, I'm sure my elk and calcium are way low right now, but uh, I'm not concerned about that right now. I just got to get the, the water parameters back in check. The important ones, which are the uh, nutrients. Calypso's Reef. What's up, man? Thank you. Side view. Yeah, but this, uh, it's definitely, definitely came back to life. This tank. Definitely has came back to life. You guys seen some of the past videos, past few reef updates. Oh, God, this looked terrible. Lost like everything. If you go to my videos from last year, this tank was amazing. Oh, my God. I had a spot on. Everything was growing like weeds. And then it all died. So and I think it happens to everybody once you get in this hobby. At least once. It's happened to most people I know, that's for sure. Uh, it's kind of a long story what happened. If you go back, I have a video past three or four, maybe the third last video I uploaded was a reef update. It's uh, labeled, did this destroy my reef tank? Basically, I believe I contributed to equipment failure protein skimmer uh, impeller was completely rusted and barely moving inside the protein skimmer and releasing all kinds of iron particles into the water and I think that's what killed all my fish I gotta be honest I think that's how I lost everything so I did multiple and that was going on for a long time a couple months and I didn't even know yeah no I mean these are pretty big high doors this is a pretty big pump and it moves a heck of a lot of water, but it's not controllable. And this one over here, this is the biggest one of these you could buy. So, I mean, they, they give you a decent amount of flow, but you know, not as much as I'd like. Yeah, for sure, man. I got a whole series on this tank as well as past tanks also. 60 gallon reef tank and bio cube too. Uh, oh, you know what? Show you guys something else. I've been debating on doing this. It's upstairs. Yeah. 
if you guys remember, I have this tank. This tank right here. I did a video on a long time ago, never set it up because I went to college, didn't have enough um, time to take care of it and didn't want to have my family take care of it for me. This is a JBJ all-in-one frag tank. This is a 20-gallon frag tank right here. I get a killer deal. This thing was $40. I got a, I got this from a dude. It was 40 bucks. And everybody knows these tanks cost a fortune. They're like $300 or something like that. I'm not about to pay that. This is one of my dream tanks right here. Um, it's got the big uh, overflow in the back and everything. I have a protein skimmer for it. Not sure if it'll work or not. It's a high door slim skim. And uh, I've just been debating on whether to set this tank up or not. I'm not too sure. A mini reef tank. I've always wanted to keep a small reef tank. Little corals, super tiny fish, and really, really tiny, interesting invertebrates. I thought that would be amazing to keep in this tank. Uh, but I'm not too sure. I need your guys' opinions. Um, mini reef tank. Uh, you can vote on it now if you want. Mini reef tank, mini uh, mini fish, mini invert tank only, no coral, or just a few coral. Or, here's another thing I was debating on what they're doing. Making this a sort of rescue tank. Rescuing fish from, say, I've always wanted to do this. A mini fish rescue, saltwater fish rescue. M rescuing fish from say poorly ran places like petco or just some uh mainly petco there's a few petcos around me they always have these poor fish that look terrible and stuff like that clownfish just simple fish just buying those guys and throwing them in here nursing them back to health and then giving them away or trading them for coral and stuff like that maybe Nursing them back to health, put them in here in poor condition, bring them back to health, and then, uh, I mean, just trade them off for something, you know? So, I mean, basically saving um, fish from poorly ran systems, malnourished fish, stuff like that, throwing them in here, nursing them back to health, and then trading them for coral and stuff like that. I always thought that would be amazing to do or really cool to do, really cool idea. I'm not too sure. I I'm just wondering if you guys would want to see something like that because... I think that would be really, really cool. I think that would be super cool. Because as you guys know, Petco, usually there's a lot of poorly ran systems and uh, poor looking fish in there. But you know these fish still eat, you know. They could still be nursed back to health. And a lot of times when people don't buy them because they look bad, they mark them way down in price and you can get them for dirt cheap. So fill this tank with uh, poorly malnourished fish, nurse them back to health. You know, save their lives. I think that'd be a really cool thing to do on this channel. I'm not too sure uh, if you guys wanted to see stuff like that. But uh, I think it'd be a really cool idea. I'd like to know your guys' opinions on that. Because that would be a heck of a lot easier for me to do. And I'm still not too sure if I want to run another reef tank. So I think like a mini... Saltwater fish rescue would be a really, really cool idea. Um, I've always kind of wanted to do that. Rescue just poor looking fish and try to nurse them back to health. I'm not too sure. Uh, uh, Calypso's Reef, you have a killer point. You should quarantine the corals before you put back in the display. That's definitely. I have made a lot of mistakes adding, I, I wouldn't say that's necessary for frags, but for bigger corals, like leather coral and mushroom rock, stuff like that, coral dip does not kill everything on them. And that's a fact. I personally believe that it's more important to quarantine coral than it is to quarantine fish. That's just me. Because you get coral with bad stuff on it, even if you dip it, it could still survive. It could destroy your rocks, your other corals, stuff like that. If you get a diseased fish, it could spread to other fish. But, I mean, most of you, you could lose a few fish, but not your whole tank, you know. So I think it's more important to quarantine 
large coral and large coral colonies more important than quarantine fish. That's just me. Always a frag tank, maybe. One in Petco the other day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I just think it'd be cool. Rescuing a uh, small fish from uh, Petco. I think that'd be a really cool video idea and a uh, really cool idea. I, I don't think anybody on YouTube does it. So, you know, it wouldn't take much to do. Just set up that small tank up there. We could even, I mean, we could even make it a reef tank, you know? But, because no disease that the fish gets, no malnourished fish will harm coral. You know, it doesn't spread to coral, it doesn't spread to anything. So we could still make it a reef tank, but limited rock, bunch of corals, maybe even a frag tank or something like that. And uh, just nursing fish back to health or rescuing fish. Just have rescued fish inside of there instead of like premium quality fish, you know? I think that'd be super cool. I'm not too sure I gotta think about that, but uh, I think it'd be a really cool idea. And then I can help you update every update. We could see how the fish are doing um, once they're super healthy get rid of him or put him even down here if, if he's doing good enough or uh you know put him to a better home than where he came from just to rescue these fish out of petco and stuff like that i think it'd be super cool but uh, i'm not too sure if that guy if that's something you guys would want to see or not because nobody else uh, there's all kinds of freshwater rescues but nothing for saltwater that i know of at least would be a super cool idea I think, it, I think it would work too because I've got if, if you guys have been following my channel for a while um, I bought a purple tang that was just terribly beat up from Petco for 20 bucks and uh, grew him up to a prime specimen of a uh, fish and uh, he was in this tank he got super aggressive and then I sold him off you know so that's how I do every time I go to pick up. I try to save as many. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, you know? I think it'd be a super cool idea, especially clownfish, you know? I don't know. I'm gonna think on that one and see, uh, see if I wanna do that. Cause it wouldn't be hard at all. It'd be super easy. All you need, yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't take anything to set up that tank. I could have that, s I could, I could have that tank set up and running within a day. I have enough beneficial rock and all kinds of crap in here. I could throw right in that tank and it'd be totally cycled instantly. I could even take sand out of here, honestly. It'd be cycled instantly, start making videos on it right away. I don't know. I just need a light for it. That's what I don't have. I'd have to buy, I'd have to get a good light. I don't settle for bad lights on saltwater tanks. It'd have to be a Kessel, uh, AI Prime. Oh, you know what it'd probably be? Is a Kessel A100. They're cheap and they're amazing lights for small tanks. Uh, yeah, I think it would be. Maybe I will, I'm not too sure. We'll see how it goes. The Zetlite, instead of a Kessel AP700, first of all, when I set up this tank, I couldn't afford an AP700 because they're like 800 bucks or something like that. This one I found used for 200 bucks. That's it, this massive light for $200. I think they retail for like 650. So I was like, I had to buy that no matter what. You know, I knew they were pretty high quality lights. So I bought it and it's amazing. The lighting's probably not as good as the AP700. I'm not too sure. But it looks really, really freaking good on here. I think it looks amazing. It definitely rivals the Kessels, that's for sure. I love it. 
the controller, the Wi-Fi control is kind of crap on it. I get to smack it every now and then because it stops working, but you know, that's not the light's fault. It's a stupid controller. They have a new one now, so maybe I'll update it that eventually. But, uh, but yeah, you guys now know some of my ideas with that little JBJ tank up top, uh, upstairs. And you guys got a super sneak peek of that planet tank that you guys will be seeing soon when I'm filming a video on it. It's a super cool tank. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that's all I got. I wanted to share with you guys. I think we got a lot accomplished in this uh, live stream. 56 minutes now. A decent amount of people stopping by. So thank you all. Thank you guys all for stopping by. Seriously, keep a lookout for that pufferfish video. It will open up a lot of people's eyes about pufferfish and reef tanks. Porcupine pufferfish, not all of them. And uh, that video should be out tomorrow or the next day, depending on if I can figure out what's wrong with the computer. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in the live stream. And I will see you guys next time.